This is Stones for Anxiety and Depression, part two. And the first thing I want to talk about is everyone has a personal favorite stone that is like their best friend. That is your first go-to stone when you're feeling down or feeling anxious. And for me, at the start of the pandemic, it turned out to be this rhodonite Shiva Lingam. Uh, and this is a lovely stone because I can keep it in my pocket. It wasn't too heavy. And then I could do this. To access the properties of the stones, you do need to heat them up or put them under pressure or use them in a crystal surgery way. Those are the three things I know about. You can put them in a grid formation, um, but that's not something that we'd be doing here with stones for anxiety and depression um, in this particular instance and so it's good to actually handle the stone that gives you comfort and to maybe even squeeze it and then in a crystal surgery infusion what I found myself doing with my rhodonite lingam was actually soothing my crown chakra like this And even now I can feel it really making quite a difference. And it's, it's kind of instructing me what to do and go in ever widening circles. And it is truly helpful. And I can even feel my heart rate coming down as I'm doing that. Um, so you Play with your stone, your favorite stone, and talk to your favorite stone, and help your favorite stone to help you. And so that's like having a conversation with your best friend when you're feeling down. Very helpful thing to do. You might want to do that as well if you're not feeling great. Uh, so that's my first suggestion. Now, anxiety and depression are very complex because they're very mixed bag. Firstly, it's hard to distinguish between anxiety and depression. And sometimes you're alternating between them or rather ping-ponging between them. Uh, and so it's quite complex to work with those in a systematic manner. And uh, I'll just show you in the book, there's about six pages dedicated to anxiety and depression procedures. This is anti-anxiety. And then we have anti-depression, and then we have that continued on the next page. And the breakthrough stones were these two here in the picture, which are here on the uh, table, smoky quartz citrine and the rose quartz. These two in combination gave me a great breakthrough in developing these two procedures and uh, I've been thrilled. So yes, rose quartz is the emotional support stone and it is quite wonderful in its effect if you're using it and handling it with an intentional way for anxiety and depression. And then citrine it turns out is truly, truly a fantastic tool for dealing with depression. And I took the trouble to look in Melody's book, her encyclopedia, Love is in the Earth encyclopedia, and she describes all the amazing properties of citrine. And she never uses the word helps with depression, but everything she says renders you optimistic, clears away what's feeling wrong and bad. And she basically describes citrine helping with depression, though she never actually uses the word depression in it. So do look up citrine in Melody's Encyclopedia. So now I'll just talk about it. Um, in fact, I'm, I want to read to you what I said about anxiety, because this was quite a breakthrough in my own understanding. And it's quite important to understand that anxiety's complexity comes from the way the nervous system is too wound up and the emotional system is also too wound up 
And so when you want to deal with anxiety, you want to use stones that attend to both the nervous system and the emotional system and then proceed to address the anxiety itself. And what I said was, energetically speaking, anxiety is the result of a complex interaction between the nervous system and the emotional system in which they reciprocally trigger each other so that the nervous system becomes more nervous and the emotional system becomes more emotional. I was rather pleased with that wording because it brilliantly summed up for me the complexity of anxiety. And so these are the stones for working with emotion and emotional stability. So we've got bustamite, sujolite, orange calcite, more orange calcite. And we've got the rose quartz for dealing with emotional support, for giving emotional support. And you can see how many different formations I engage in this work. And then for the nervous system part, I use the seraphonite and you can use blue uvite in mica to do a nervous system detox. You can also use shungite. And so one does want to attend to helping the nervous system, then helping to stabilize the emotional system. And then after that, you progress to using the citrine and rose quartz together in whichever formations you want. And it's the synergy of them working together is what creates the most brilliant effect. That's with depression too. Now that with depression, you can add in using lipidolite in mica. And this is very rich in lithium. And lithium is the substance that helps people with depression. Now I do want to be clear that depression does uh, cover a wide range of difficulties that people can have and uh, these techniques are not designed for helping people with psychiatric depression. They will be supportive but palliative. You, For psychiatric depressions you do really want to deal with a psychiatrist and you do want to get help from the medical profession. But for general depressions that come upon us because our lives are hard or disappointing or we're sad or we've got unresolved anger, then these techniques are very, very helpful for those kinds of depression. And with this lithium rich material, it's really great how one can use it to help with depression. And I just want to encourage you all to remember to do the detox work and to deal with the anger. So here's the tools for the detox work. You also may want to do decording before you work on your depressions. These are the materials hemimorphite and convoluted sheet cords for decording relationship cords. And often what you need to deal with is your cords, bring back your cords from self to others, as well as remove cords that are coming in from other people. And then an hydrite and epidote these are very helpful for the cords of socialization and self-criticism and those kind of cords can also be implicated in both anxiety and depression. So you can see you do have to evaluate what's going on and do clearing and detox techniques and then proceed. And if you're wanting to work with anger, which is often a component in both anxiety and depression, you can use sardonics for that. So that kind of clearing is really wonderful uh, before trying to do the procedure specifically for anxiety or the procedure for depression. So that's great. Thank you.